All right, so let's have a look at this next example, which is a bit harder, but it's still within the scope of what you guys will be expected to do. Y equals X plus two on X squared minus one. We're gonna look at the same features that we were trying to work out before. Let's begin with those intercepts and start with the X intercept. So we let Y equal zero. And you can see here, if I just do a straight substitution, this highlights what we were talking about before, um, that if you have x plus two on x squared minus one equals zero, it doesn't matter what value of x you put into the denominator, you'll never get something uh, on the right hand side, which is zero, right? What you want is for this numerator to equal zero. You want x plus two to equal zero, so x must be negative two. So this guy here is our x-intercept. Let's move on and do a y-intercept, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing but in reverse. I'll let x equal 0 and when I do the substitution you can see uh, up here in the top right you've got uh, this x term which becomes nothing, this x term also becomes nothing, so you just get left with 2 on negative 1 which is negative 2, so there's our y-intercept. Intercepts check, now let's think about our asymptotes. So I'm gonna look for vertical asymptotes and then I'm gonna look for horizontal ones. So vertical, let's have a think about this. Remember, going back to what we were saying before, these come from domain discontinuity. So places where the function explodes and stops working. Uh, for us, that means where the denominator is equal to zero. Now if you have a look at our function here, here it is, um, the denominator there is x squared minus one. If that denominator were equal to zero, we know this is what will give us a discontinuity. So we can go ahead and we can solve this equation. You can see I can factorize on the left hand side there because I've got difference of squares. Move that equal sign so it's all in line. And this gives us uh, not one, but actually two different solutions, which means there are two vertical asymptotes. So x equals negative one or x equals one. Now in the case of one over x, um, or this previous example here, what was that? Two x minus one on x plus two. We noticed there was just one vertical asymptote, but if you make your denominator, if you make that polynomial more complicated, if it's a, a cubic or if it's a quartic or anything like that, you can introduce as many vertical asymptotes as you like. So this time we've gotten two. Then lastly, let's work out our horizontal asymptotes. Now, like I mentioned before, there's lots of ways to work this out, but probably the simplest way is just to throw in some very large positive values and some very large negative values. So if I say x equals 1,000, what would that mean? If I go to this function here, you can see I'm gonna get uh, y equals 1,000 plus two, which is 1,002, divided by a um, thousand is going to get squared, so it's going to be um, a million minus one. So that's 999,999. Now, have a look at this evaluation here. You can see that this is going to have such an enormous denominator that even though the numerator is also large, the denominator is always going to be bigger. And that's because you can see it's the denominator has an x squared term in it. So no matter how big the numerator gets, I can put in x equals a million or x equals a billion, the denominator will always get bigger faster. So that means that you're always going to get this enormous denominator here, which means that y is approaching zero. But importantly, um, you might notice that you've got a positive value here on the numerator and the denominator. So therefore, y is approaching zero, but it's approaching it from above. That's crucially important. As you approach x is positive infinity, y is going to get closer and closer to zero, but it'll do it from positive values. Now the reason why that's worth highlighting is if you try out the other side, x equals negative a thousand and go ahead and pop that guy in. When you evaluate this, let's go back up, you can see it's negative uh, thousand plus two. So that's negative 998. And then on the denominator, you've got x squared minus one, which is negative a thousand all squared. Well that, just like before, is actually 999,000. 999 because x squared is an even function so if you put in a positive or a negative of the same size you get the same value. So the important thing is again you've got an enormous denominator this thing is becoming very very close to zero but it's zero 
from the negative side. You can see that from that numerator there, right? A negative divided by a positive, irrespective of their size, a negative divided by a positive will be negative. So you're gonna get very small negative values. Okay, so what does this tell us together? You're, you're approaching zero on the right hand side, you're approaching it on the left hand side, so your horizontal asymptote from all of this information here will be y equals zero, okay? Now what you can see here, let's assemble all the information. You've got an x-intercept of negative two, y-intercept of negative two, two vertical asymptotes, x equals negative one and x equals one, and then you've got a, a horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. And this is a really good opportunity to remind you, as you're doing your working, please tell us what you're working out. Don't just um, you know, have a mess of equations here and think, oh, I'm gonna let x equals zero and that'll mean something else. I know that's what your brain is doing, but I have to know what that actually gives me. Because otherwise, like x equals negative two, on the previous question, that wasn't an intercept, that was an asymptote. These equations here can stand for radically different things. It's the words, it's the language you use around that working that actually decides well, what does it actually refer to, okay? All right, so I have all my main pieces here. What I'm gonna do is, I think I actually need a bit more space. So I'm going to uh, move this guy. We'll come back to this homework later on. Let's move this out the way. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my, um, I'm gonna draw my Cartesian plane and um, I need enough room to do that. So let's make this all a little bit smaller. Pop it up there. And then let's draw ourselves um, an X and a Y axis that's an appropriate size. Okay, so I think that's enough space. Go ahead, vertical line, horizontal line. There we go. And let's put some tops and tails on these guys. Okay, now I've got a lot of information already about this graph. You can see I worked out my X and my Y intercepts. They are going to be at, let's put in negative one, negative two. There's my negative two intercept uh, for uh, the X axis. And then I've also got a negative two axis for the uh, intercept for the Y axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. So my intercepts, check. I'm gonna move this because it's a bit harder to read. Let's put it right there. Um, then I'm also going to get my asymptotes. Now you might recall, this is the one where I worked out there were two of them. X is negative one and X is positive one. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark in. That's, that's actually already right there. That's X equals negative one there. So I'm just gonna draw my vertical asymptote clean through it, like so. Uh, that's X equals negative one. Then I need the other one on the opposite side. So we'll put in a positive one there, drawing downwards again. And that's X equals one. Now lastly, and um, this is gonna be really important here because you'll um, start to realize why we did some of the theory earlier on. I'm now gonna put in my horizontal asymptote and I wonder if you notice something unusual. I'm gonna start over here on the right hand side. There's my X, uh, sorry, my Y equals zero, horizontal asymptote that I worked out uh, just up here. Okay, so it's sitting on the X axis like so. I'm just drawing my lines across. And then as you draw all the way across, you might realize you hit this guy. This is the intercept, right? Now we already worked out an intercept, X intercept before. It was like the first thing that we calculated. But we also found that Y equals zero was a horizontal asymptote. So this is an example of a graph that passes directly through its horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote only tells you about the extreme values, the very far left and the very far right. In the middle of the graph, the horizontal asymptote doesn't tell you anything. So you can intersect right through it just like we were seeing before. 